So we're ready to start painting now. I've sprayed a little bit of, of the paint to get the consistency right. You'll have to do this probably a couple of times. When you airbrush paints, use them quite watery. Don't use them too watery, of course, but as you, you know in the first videos, um, I explained about the consistency of milk. Just a little bit thinner than that is, is how you want it. Um, spray it a couple of times on a piece of white paper. White's important because you'll get the colour tones correct. And I'm going to start now by, as you can see, the, the tank itself has actually been sprayed black. I'm not going to use the white overspray technique on this. Um, we're going to spray the entire vehicle in a dust coat, which means we're going to go very lightly all over the vehicle, and then we're going to fill in the highlights a little bit later. So I'm going to start by pressing the foot pedal, you can hear the compressor kick in, and we're going to spray It's more or less like spray can spraying, but you get much more control over it. Don't worry about filling it in as a solid colour. You only want to start laying blue onto the top surfaces. And we're going to go all over the vehicle. As you can see, there's going to be quite a lot of black showing through underneath there. That's going to provide our shade. So again. Don't fill it with paint, you don't have to use too much paint if you want to put a light spray over the entire area. You are literally letting the paint dust on, kind of like the technique we use for spraying the white as a, a begin highlight. We're going to go all over the vehicle with this. I'm going to more or less finish this vehicle today to show you all the basic techniques. You'll also notice that I'm not wearing a mask, which is a really silly thing to do you really should wear a mask. Um, it is acrylic, the particles are very heavy, so it really won't have too much effect on you breathing them in. But it's always safe, better to be safe than sorry. Um, I would recommend wearing a mask. The only reason I'm not is so I can talk to you today. But I'm going to keep it quite brief. We've got plenty of ventilation here. All the windows are open. We've got a lot of air circulating, so it's not quite as bad. I also want to show you now using water with this stuff. It is very effective. It's very similar to the way we applied the mud, only it will come out differently because we haven't used the plastic putty in it. As this dries, it will actually dry quite light. This is a nice technique for adding mud splashes up the sides of vehicles. And literally, all you do is, you don't get an old toothbrush and flick it because it's a bit too random. I tend to just blob it on where I feel it necessary. So if you'll imagine the tank careering through the mud, you'll often get splashes up the side here. I'm going to add them in small spots and join it into the rest of the vehicle where you applied the mud with the stippling motion earlier. And we're going to add the odd splash here and there. You don't want to overdo it. Just the other thing to give the impression of the mud being quite random. We'll go around fittings and rivets and we'll just wipe it off them. It'll actually dry much lighter around them as well, so it'll give that extra dimension as a more dried on mud. I'm also going to get the hairdryer onto this when it's finished, not only to speed up the process, um, but to uh, keep everything in order so I can move on to the next stage and, sh and show you the, the final stage of how to simulate chipped paint and scratched paint. So we're going to go this, use the same technique around the rivets. Remember it's just the pigment with water added. There's nothing else in there, there's no paint or anything. Keep it quite random, just let your brush dance about on it. Doesn't have to be perfect. 